shall learn how to use Scratch to test numbers and do some algebra. We're going to start with a basic function that's going to see if our number is odd or even. And that is going to use the Scratch Cat asking questions, which is the cool part. And then we're going to upgrade our program to find out whether our number is a prime number. That there is a whole lot more tricky. But with some focus and persistence, I'm sure we'll get there. So, first of all, how do we input a number into Scratch? To do that, we're going to use sensing. And in here, there is an option where the cat asks questions. And instead of what's your name, we can say what number? What number do you want to test? And if we click on it, what number do you want to test? Aha. Uh -huh. And I suppose this is the number that wants to test. Now, just to confirm that we're going to be testing the right number, we can say, so you are testing. And that. So if we if we write in seven and then hit enter, so you're testing seven. Okay, it works. We managed to get number seven into memory. Um, and now to figure out if seven is odd or even, well, we can just use the mod function here, and. Um, Mod is the remainder. So if we say uh, we put in our answer, which was number seven, the number we're testing, and if we say modulus seven mod two, the remainder of seven divided by two, we should get one. And if we get one, obviously seven is an odd number, because the remainder for even numbers when you divide by two is always zero. So how do we get the scratch cat to say, ooh, you got an odd number today? Well, we can write an if statement. If. Will this go in there? No. Hmm. If answer mod 2 so, if the remainder is zero, then the scratch cat can say, that's an even number. That's an even number. Else, it can say, that's an odd number. So, I don't know. I think... It might work. Let's try this again. Let's try 10. Enter. So you're testing 10. That's an even number. Cool. Let's try my favorite number, 11. So you're testing 11. That's an odd number. Yay! Works reasonably well. So now for the hard part. And let's start from scratch here. We're just going to ask what number do you want to test, and we're going to get told the number we want to test. How do we get to the point of figuring out whether that number is a prime or not? Well, it would take the remainder division that we have used to determine other even. So we're going to go back to our mod, and we're going to say if the answer that we have is, uh, you know, divided by a set of numbers. So we're going to have to create a variable, and I'm going to call that variable a tester. So if the answer mod tester, if that is equal to zero, then we have a prime number. So what, what does that mean? Well, we, we, we're going to need to increase this tester. Start it from 2 and increase it by 1 until we get 
just one less than the answer. So let's say we had um, number seven. We're going to have to divide seven by six, seven by five, seven by four, seven by three, and finally seven by two. And if we get a remainder every time, then we have ourselves a prime number. If the remainder hits zero, then we don't have a prime number. So let's let's make an if statement. If the answer mod tester equals to zero, then it's not a prime number. So how do we do this sufficient number of times? Well, remember, we need to set the tester starting at 2. So we're going to have to set it at 2. And now we're going to have to increase it by 1. And we're going to have to increase it by 1 a certain number of times. And there is a trick to it. So we can say repeat until. Um, we can repeat until duplicate tester equals answer. Well, when they do that, then the remainder will be zero. But if tester equals to answer minus one, then you will go, aha, uh -huh. what is answer minus one? That's seven minus six. So it'll be seven divided by six. We'll still get a remainder. So, if this is correct, we should be, and at this stage, when number is not a prime, there is no point doing more tests. If it's not a prime, it's not a prime. We can end the program there. And we should be able to, at this stage, um, determine if number is not a prime. And if it's not a prime, then it's not a prime. So let, let's try a not a prime number, 52. So you're testing 52, not a prime number. Let's try another one, 10. Good. And what happens when we put in a prime number, like 11? It should do nothing. It should say nothing. Yes. And to make this thing work, see, it's, it's kind of, the loop is still lit up because it's reached this point and it hasn't said stop all, it's just, and I have a feeling if I just wrote, you know, because if it's not a prime, it's going to get stopped. Not a prime number gets stopped permanently. And therefore, if I run this and say, yay, prime number, hmm. I wonder if this is going to work. And it doesn't get there. That is very interesting. Why not? Ah! Because in previous, tester has remained at 2 the whole time. We haven't made tester grow. So it should be, um, you know, 7 divided, it was divided by 2, and that was equal to 0. That's how we got all the even numbers um, were declared not prime. So we really should have, inside this repeat loop, put an increase of tester by one and at the start of the very pro very start of the program we should have test set the tester to zero so let's try again let's try with some odd uh not prime numbers so let's try 15. not a prime number fantastic but 17 is so let's try 17 next Yay, a prime number. It works. Now let's try my favorite. If I click 11. That's great. And if I was to put this in a forever loop, 
and maybe start off with the green flag. And if I click the green flag, and if I go 16, would you get back to asking me what number I want to test? Hmm. Ah, because the scripts get stopped. So basically, you have to um, press the green flag every time you start. But it works great, and it tests prime numbers. This was probably the hardest thing that you will do in this um, Scratch course. But if you can handle this, then your next challenge will be to list out the factors of the number that you test. And the factors are the two numbers that multiply to make up the tested number. So factors of like 10 are 5 and 2, because five, 5 times 2 makes 10. Anyhow, I'll leave it at this and keep going.